Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Techno Analysis Trading Plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. Before we pull off our video, we always want to start off our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what foreign investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can't lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes only, future results not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility, trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our forex technical analysis trading plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. In each video, we look at the prior session's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll review the gold chart to come up with leading sentiment. We'll try to create a low volatility and inside bar watch list, and we have an education spotlight at the end. Please send your feedback and comments to contact at dmbfx.com, and let's head to the charts. As always, we are starting off with the gold chart. The first thing we should definitely notice on the gold chart is that we are closing at a new high. So we been talking about when were we going to test this swing high. We have some failures here. You almost have an uh, inverted head and shoulders going on here. Here's a shoulder, there's a head, here's a shoulder, or a weird looking W pattern, however you want to look at it. The most important thing is we are closing as it is right now. Uh, there's still more time in the day at a new high. Um, and we can see that the volume is increasing. Now, what, what could this be? What have we been talking about? Bernanke spoke. He talked about potentially weakening the dollar more with another round of quantitative easing, and thus people sought safety in gold, and gold has taken up. When you look at this, it almost makes you think that did somebody know something the way that gold has really taken off and, uh, uh, with, before the announcement today. Uh, we can see, obviously, over here as we switch to our hourly that uh, we are over overbought um, with our... Uh, market profile and certainly after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days up, that's going to be the case. But the good thing about this move up is it is with volume. And when we get to our currency page, you'll see we don't have volume. But we still see, for the most part, parity with our moving averages on the volume. So for this, uh, because we're overbought, because it looks like we may be forming a volume resistance, I may. You know, the safe play here is to either start looking for a short or wait for a pullback to go in with the continuation. So we have a strong goal. What does that mean to the dollar? Well, we can see uh, that on our hourly that the pound has taken control. And let's come back over here. And what did we talk about yesterday? How the buyers came in, brought it right back up. We tested um, our channel, and not only did we test this channel, we took it all out in one day, and we're closing above it. So now we have to start thinking about whether or not we're going to go go back up and test the 50, test our uptrend line. That's, we have to start thinking about that because we left this auction area, and we moved higher. Now we can see that we still have some selling volume in control here, and, we're, and this huge move up is still on light volume. So we have to be cognizant of that. But the most important thing is, again, going back, strong gold, weak dollar, uh, gold, uh, the dollar uh, is now underneath our pound. So the pound is showing strength, even though it's not a lot of strength. But at least it has now fractionally made its way back above zero. So where that puts us is we are above our long-term moving average. We are in a selling zone area with uh, the pound taking control, which would allow for this to move higher. So um, there is a potential for uh, uh, a reversal play here. I think I'm going to sit on hands on a moment and see what happens in the next day. Will this 200 moving average hold up as support? Will this continuation move higher? And right now, with the dollar with the dollar not in control and the pound in control, we should see this continue to move higher. Let's check that with the euro now, and we're seeing the same thing. We came down and tested the um, 
200 moving average, and now we've come right back up. When we look at that on our um, hourly time frame, we can see this push higher from the buy zone all the way back up. Now, we're still not at our long-term moving average, but we are getting back to parity into a neutral zone. But and right here, we can see the, the euro taking control, but this one is not above zero. So it's going to be interesting about whether or not we have the strength to keep moving higher, even though the euro has taken control. Finally, we have the dollar franc, and this is going to be the opposite. Now, we've been watching this range here on the daily. We've been watching this range, and now we're pushing lower. Why? Because the dollar lost control yesterday, and it continued throughout the day. And again, the announcement from Bernanke about the potential of more easing and weakening of the dollar has caused this to move lower and it caused the franc to continue to take control. Now, Tomorrow, we have Italy voting on its austerity cuts, so that could affect the euro. We'll have to wait and see until the announcement. As we move on to our low volatility and inside our watch list, we do have one for our low volatility, and that is euro yen. If you pulled it up, you'll see it's been in a very tight range. What we're looking for is pull up your one-hour chart, which Bollinger Bands, standard deviation, of two and marking the high and low and we're waiting for a break out and we do not have anything for our inside bar watch list. So as we get to our education spotlight we've been talking about what separates winning traders and losing traders and we we have a couple left before we end this discussion but today we're going to talk about having realistic goals. Uh, too often traders get on Google see something on TV, hear it on the radio, get rich quick scenarios, think they're going to take $200, turn it into $1,000 in, in a week. And that's just not going to happen. It can happen, but it usually does not happen. And what happens is you're trading in the wrong style. The setups that you have require you to have more money, and therefore you're blowing out your accounts when you're taking heat, risk. Um, and so you're not living to trade another day, you're not cutting your losses and letting your winners run, uh, and therefore you're letting your unrealistic goals, which have to do with the emotions, which we've talked about before, uh, by not having realistic goals, you're getting frustrated, you're battling the market, and you're just not following a proven system. So consistent profitable traders have a system, it's proven, it's tested, and it matches their risk tolerance and their investing goals, but more importantly, it also allows them to have realistic goals of what they're going to make each day, each week, each month. Which, as always, is what we're talking about here at DMBFX.com, realistic focused discipline training. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.